evening, everyone. Welcome to the Business of Property. We're just about to go live on a Property Development Australia Facebook page. Uh, for anyone who wants to join in the Zoom chat room, um, I believe there is an invitation. Hold on. I'm just going to copy the URL and pop it in the comment section. Otherwise, we are on the live and I'd like to welcome, this is a bit exciting, we've been working on a bit of a collaboration. I've got Tom, Dave and Robert from Square and Around, a bit of a big wave. <laughs> Alex, Alex is watching on the sidelines. <laughs> Thanks Alex for joining. Um, and it's, as mentioned, what I might do is ask, uh, if you guys wouldn't mind muting and then we it will sort of filter out any of that feedback. Um, uh, Square and the Round and Property Development Australia have come together as a bit of a collaboration and a partnership to, to offer um, an educational hub. You know, we, we've obviously, the whole idea of, of Property Development Australia has always been to, to educate, to empower and to elevate um, property developers. And it was really good timing um, that Tom is putting together uh, pretty much a, a, a platform to be able to deliver a whole lot of uh, different types of masterclasses. And then we started talking about how we could have classes and it's almost like a menu of different topics and things that are relevant to, to property developers um, that is easily accessible and, mm. and again, also affordable for, mm. for everyone. Uh, and so I'd like to be able to, again, introduce you um, to Tom, Dave and Robert, and mm. I'll let the three of you sort of, you know, give everyone a little bit of a, a spiel about your bio and who you are. Um, hey, Tony, how are you doing? Welcome. Good, Cheryl. Hi. I yeah. thought, I thought, I thought you got bored and <laughs> just went, nah, I'm leaving. Well, I had Zoom, I had some Zoom issues. I don't know why, but anyway, we got that's, it. Now. That's, that's Zoom issues for you. Welcome. Um, sorry, Tom, if you would you kindly introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about Square in the Round. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Cheryl. And, um, Good evening, all. Wrapped to be on board and wrapped to be with, with all of you. Um, so, Tom Mifsud is my name. Um, and uh, myself, you know, Square in the Round is a, is, is a, is a purpose and a, and a platform, as what Cheryl's described, that looks to support um, the talent of tomorrow and, uh, and everyday people who are looking to, um, to maximize their full potential um, in areas that they're looking to seek out. Um, the, the purpose relates to my own experience, like most of our experiences do. Um, and it's still very much in the startup phase, but it's, um, it's a purpose that I believe where if we can provide the right content in the right environment with the right people at the right time, um, we can make a significant difference. Um, but we do it, as Cheryl's mentioned, in a collaborative way. Um, so to give you an idea of some of the things that we've been doing um, screwing around today, um, we run a live uh, Zoom forum similar to this forum um, every fortnight Thursday, where we invite um, some of Australia's leading entrepreneurs um, to join in a, in a discussion. So not a Q&A, um, but a discussion that touches on things like entrepreneurship, career, um, you know, uh, pr purpose, uh, career progression, success, um, that often delves into the richness of the um, specific topic that, um, that we're talking about, um, but allows people to create really good networks, ask the questions, that we're often asking, um, but build a following and a gathering where people um, create and add some real value. So um, we're really proud of what we're doing there and uh, we continue to run that every fortnight Thursday. Um, where we've looked to really pivot and um, try to make some difference and impact now is um, through our property development hub. Um, and teamed up with um, the gentleman on the call, Dave and Rob, who I'll throw to in a second, um, passionate about property, live and breathe it, um, uh, as, uh, aspiring and successful um, to date um, property developers themselves, both through individual and uh, joint ventures upcoming, um, and have a lot that we want to relate to and can relate to um, and have come together and share the same purpose, which is how can we give back to those partner with the talent of tomorrow and make a, sig a serious difference um, you know, to those involved in property. Um, so that's essentially uh, a bit about me and Square in the Round. Um, and a bit of what we're trying to achieve um, through this partnership. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to share my screen also. 
and I'm going to introduce Rob um, Katojo, who will talk a bit about IMSA. Um, Rob, do you want to go for it, mate? Hi, guys. Um, thanks, thanks, Tom and uh, Cheryl. It's a pleasure to be a part of this. Um, as Tom touched on, um, he approached us a, a little while ago about, um, I guess, leveraging his platform and, and offering and sharing our experiences, um, you know, and, and putting together a class um, on, on property development for, I guess, entry-level people that have real passion for it, like uh, myself and Dave do. Um, so, yeah, I, I jumped at that opportunity and, and I guess... A, um, Bit about myself. I sort of come from a I come from a construction background. Um, I've grown up with uh, with a family of construction professionals, and and my father himself was a property developer, and that's what sort of got me into it. Um, so I work in construction currently. I've worked in construction um, uh, for the last twelve years since I graduated at uni, um, predominantly in apartment complex space, a bit of commercial fit out, and then and and. Uh, um, mainly residential um, new building the, the last two to three years. Um, so I've uh, I've got a bit of experience now in property development. Um, Tom's got a slide up at the moment. I'm sure you can see uh, there's a few projects there. There's uh, one that's not up at the moment, but um, I'm from from Melbourne. Um, so around the inner Melbourne suburbs, I've done a, a small project in, in Astor Vale, which is listed there uh, in the photos. Um, show that's the two side by side. Uh, with the, the red brick, uh, that was a that was a uh, two two story um, uh, two bedroom townhouse project um, on, in Ascot Vale. I'm not sure if you'll be familiar with it. And the other one's another project in in Essendon, which is in a city Melbourne as well. Um, so yeah, that's just a bit about me. Um, and we'll Dave will introduce himself, and then we'll touch on a bit about the, the class that we want to talk about as well. Thanks, Rob. G'day, thanks for that. Um, all right, I'm also having an issue by the sounds of things, but that's all right. I think I'm up and running. Uh, g'day, my name's David DiStefano. Now, um, I guess I call myself a, a, a banker by trade, because deep down, that's what I think I am. Um, I worked at a big four bank for just short of 10 years and predominantly within the commercial property space. So that's where my property uh, background came from. I was, I was funding a lot of developments, small and medium scale developments, and um, really under working with, with the whole project team, with the developer, with the project managers, with the builders, and, and just really get understanding what, uh, what it takes and, and what they were going through to, to complete their projects. And um, I thought I'd have a crack at it, really. Uh, that's where it basically all stemmed from. So I got the inspiration there. I stole a few of their, their tricks or, or maybe just leveraged off them. I probably won't use steel. Um, since then, I've moved to uh, a private financier. So I'm now at a non-bank financier and I still fund commercial property developments all across uh, the Eastern Seaboard. Um, so still kept in the game, still have my uh, finger on the pulse and um, that just keeps me pretty up to date, I feel, with uh, what's going on in the property world. In terms of the, the slide on your screen, you'll see a few uh, small scale um, inner, inner city Melbourne developments, um, which I've had a hand in at least and, and completed. Uh, I think largely um, you, you need to try and keep it as keep it as simple as possible because it can get um, very confusing very quickly, I think is a piece of advice. So if you can just make sure you can keep bringing it back to the basics and um, have a good team with you, you can produce some nice looking uh, little properties. Awesome. Thank you, Dave. And uh, thanks, Rob. Um, Cheryl, I might just give a quick overview, if that's okay, of um, the masterclass program we've put together, so to give context to the group, and um, from there I'll get Dave and Rob to talk through the other uh, detail of that. Is that is that okay if we transition? Yeah, to go that? go ahead. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Um, so, as um, really important as Cheryl mentioned up front, um, you know, an education hub 
is something that um, that she's wanting to bring to the audience. And um, yeah, we've we've sort of come into the right time, passionate about you know pushing and providing the right level of content to a group that might require it. Um, so you know. I will preface that up front, right? This is the first of many that we hope we deliver in a quality and effective way for this group. And we'll do that through feedback. What we propose today might look different, hopefully in six to nine months time as we continue to build an outstanding relationship with this group, okay? Um, but as we launch um, this education hub, um, we've taken an approach where we've, um, we've, we've looked at the, the poll results that come in and it was flagged um, a week or so back in the group. Um, we've also leveraged the experience and expertise of both Dave and Rob, but other aspiring property developers um, within our network. Um, and also the dynamic of, um, of most online groups where information is there and accessible for you, but do people really know where to go to get that information? Um, and that's why we've taken a bit of a push approach, all right? So um, it might not meet the needs of everyone, um, and we acknowledge that. We hope it meets the needs of us. But we, we have felt that in, to kick this off, if we have a planned push approach with some content we can build, and then as the program continues through your feedback, um, you know, that can be curated to whatever it needs to look like uh, moving forward. Okay. Um, so this slide just gives you a bit of a summary of what we're, of what the master, so it's a masterclass. Um, it's, uh, it's a session per week on a Wednesday, um, commencing the 10th of June, um, and it'll be all on Zoom, and it'll be hosted by Rob and Dave. Um, and they will talk through, I'll, I'll pass back to them now as I'll talk through what you can expect week on week, but online platform, ability to share resources, connect network, and a great thing will be we develop a bit of a mini community on these forums where the topics can follow through and carry on and um, create some great synergies on, um, on those forums. Um, all right, so then I'm going to just now move into the next slide. And once Rob and Dave talk through the detail, We'll stop and then um, we'll throw it out there for plenty of questions, comments, and discussions. All right. So if you've got questions, just hang tight, make note of them, and then we'll get to them shortly. Um, Rob, do you want to talk and open up about week one? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I guess we've put together a, a four-week class that we think targets um, the fundamentals of property development, especially at, a, at an entry level when you're looking to get some skin in the game. Um, so week one will be mainly focused on starting out and, and, and where do you start? Um, who do you speak to? Essentially understanding the importance of, of um, surrounding yourself with, with the right team, the right team of professionals, um, the things you should be doing first before uh, you know, sourcing your property. Um, the things, just key things that you need to understand um, about property development um, and the importance of consultants uh, the importance, uh, I guess, of the builder. Um, uh, and then, you know, another thing that Dave will, another topic that Dave will touch on in more detail is feasibility and, and finance, which is sometimes the most critical aspect of, of property development. And it can be the most difficult aspect as well. Um, so, yeah, week one will be based, based on starting out and, and the key, the fundamentals and, and what you need to be considering um, before venturing on this journey. And, and before I go to a day for week two, uh, Rob, and, and not this is not to tell anyone how to suck eggs, so to speak. But why do we why do we decide that this topic was the first week to the first topic to kick off with in terms of the structure of the masterclass? Sorry, what was that Tom? What just so why, so why like why do we feel starting out building a team was the first main topic that we kick off with from a masterclass? Well, it's the mo I think it's the most it's the burning question everyone has. Um, just from my experience, when I first started, it was all, um, it was a bit up in the air. Um, I didn't really know where to start. And, and I, I learned, I guess, over the journey that there's some key fundamentals that you need to know and a few things that you need to have in place, um, which, which you know, will lead you to, I guess, your, your, your first project for those entry level developers. Um, so it's just drawing from that experience. Um, it can be confusing. There's a, a range of consultants that, you should really be um, engaging with at the start, and it can be, you know, accountants, um, financiers, um, you know, having a, having a good architect, um, you know, understanding first and foremost, understanding your financial position because that's critical to any development. You might think you can buy a site and do X, Y, Z, but um, yeah, there's you, you generally your first base is always getting your finance right. So was, that was one of the things that I learned along the way, and and, uh, and it's just 
given that general direction to people about, um, yeah, where, where, what they should be considering first, because that's yeah. the most critical element, I think. Yeah, yeah, cool. awesome. Thanks, mate. Dave, do you want to jump into weeks two and three? Yeah, so I'll first start by just reiterating a few points that, so that Rob touched on that um, you can't get into really the, the any next steps until you've got your right team. Um, I see property developers as a bit of a jack of all trades. Yeah, I'd like to think I know a bit about everything, but uh, I'm probably a master at none, except that I'm in finance. So maybe I'll, I'll give myself um, the tick for, for finance, but we, we don't know everything. You really don't. So you need to use the experts, um, which sort of leads on to my, I guess the feasibility point is the fact that you need to bring all those experts, all that information that they gave you all together to create your feasibility. Um, so if you look at it, you just look at, well, first and foremost, you need to understand what your strategy is. And if you don't understand what your strategy is, I think it can all fall away pretty quickly. Um, so it's just formulating that strategy. What are the key drivers there and what metrics are important? Once you can understand what your end game is, I think it can really help. It's looking at, uh, a capable town plan uh, architect and town planner build that relationship with them they are happy to help that's what i found they were really happy to impart their knowledge onto you um research 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 the the end product um get get real estate agents to to help you do this uh, again that they're, they're they're happy to help um i guess in my experience and there's always something in it for, for all these consultants at the end of the day. So you'll find everyone is, is warm and welcome, welcoming and happy to help when asked for. Um, it's trying to engage builders early. So when you're trying to build that feasibility, you obviously you need to try and understand what your core construction costs might look like. Um, it's hard for, for the non-builders to understand what it costs to build a townhouse, two townhouses, whatnot. Uh, maybe just try and understand the complexities and the size of the development. And that's what we can go through. Just trying to get a key, a feel for how we can position sort of two develop, townhouse developments together and three townhouse developments together. Um, and then we can try and understand a square meter rate or, or something along those lines. It's, it's really going to help you build that correct feasibility. Um, just after that FISO is done, you need to understand the finance part. And again, we can talk you through how, um, what your options are. Um, you need to talk again to your consultants here, but just understanding the difference between banks and non-banks, there are plenty of options. And I, I think that uh, if non-banks aren't, all, uh, sorry, bank, major banks aren't always the key to help you succeed in your property development. So let's explore what non-banks can do for you. Um, there's consumer lending, there's commercial lending it comes with a whole ton of different implications there. So just really need to understand your feasibility and your finance uh, aspects. Uh, and that's just really gonna drive you a good project. Thanks, Dave. Um, property sourcing and, and build, the builder and design. Rob, do you wanna cover, cover that? Oh, I might jump in as site sourcing if, oh, if I could, it. just while, while I'm hogging the screen. Um, look, site sort. I tried to rank these as in. We tried to rank it as a priority, but we worked out that they're all one more important than the other. So you got to understand your financial capacity, as Rob mentioned. Uh, you got to understand what your strategy is. You got to understand what you can do by building out your feasibility. It's feasibility. Then you go on looking for a site then you've got to be proactive. You're calling your agent and you're telling them that you're ready for it. You're ready to buy. Uh, look, I'm not a real estate agent. And again, I don't want to speak for any real estate agents, but my view is that if you tell a real estate agent that you're ready to buy, they're going to love you. Uh, and they're going to give you, you know, potentially off market opportunities or something like that. Um, you know, we'll move into understanding land sizes, topography, site trees, the zoning, any precedent that's been set on the site. Um, just a whole bunch of elements of a particular site that can hinder or enhance their ability to go and um, develop a really strong project. Thanks, Thanks so much. Rob, do you want to bring us home? Yeah, and finally, I guess week four, um, the fourth dot point there, um, it's about the builder and the design. 
So that's something where I've got a lot of experience in, having been in construction uh, my whole life. And, and it's about, um, I guess, once you've, you've found your site um, and you're looking to, um, I guess, develop the land for whatever purpose um, or what's whatever um, amount of units or dwellings you intend to put on it, it's, it's important and critical to obviously have the right builder, um, but also the design, design and, and potentially value managing um, the right finishes with your architect that um, can keep your costs down, but at the same time, you don't want to be delivering you know, cheap projects. You want to be delivering efficient projects with good finishes, but it's about understanding um, the costs associated with particular finishes and, and, and how you can sort of balance, balance your costs versus quality. Um, so then there's also the builder, and that's a, obviously a, a scary process in the, um, with appointing a builder that you may not have had any dealings with or you know, you're only trusting their reputation. Um, so there's a lot of elements to consider there, particularly when it comes to signing that contract with the builder. Um, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things that, unless you're involved in the game of building, you might miss um, key factors or, or points that a builder might have in a build contract that might cost you more money uh, when it comes to actually building the project, but you're not aware of it. So, um, yeah, I guess the, the week four is, is, is then that, that, I guess it's you've successfully bought your 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 um your land and you've sourced your site, you've, you've got your feasibility in place. And it's about getting that last box, tick, last box ticks, getting the design right, getting the builder right, so you can then make that a profitable venture. Um, yeah, so they all tie into each other. Um, they all be there'll be a lot of cross referencing throughout the different weeks because it's just the nature of property development, um, and there's just a lot of things uh, to to not necessarily be a master of, but as as we touched on earlier, you, you've got to have the right team. That's that's what I found. The right team of professionals can really lead you, um, you know, to to a successful outcome. So um, yeah, that's definitely critical. Awesome. Thank you, Rob. And thanks, Dave. Well done. Well, um, we'll stop talking for a second. Might throw it out there for any questions, comments. I might start if if I can, gentlemen. Um, tell us a little bit about how the format of um, these classes are going to be run and, and, and sort of timing wise as well. So you mentioned it's going to be on a when is it Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday night, seven thirty p.m. Um, we'll allow from 75 to 90 minutes. Um, uh, but yeah, 7.30 p.m. kickoff. Um, as you can see on the slide here, um, the use of case studies, real life examples from both Rob and Dave, where they relate to past projects. I'm sure that they can talk to you about some of the things they're doing now as well and how that can relate to the topics. Um, but there'll be 15, 20 minutes for every session around Q&A um, that will be allowed. Um, no work, no homework or anything like that. Um, but knowing that some of these topics might yield some research in between based on the engagement of the audience and, and they're the stuff that would come into, uh, that could flow into the following week. Okie dokie. Um, I mean, and, and, and I guess the, 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 the great thing about this, and we all know it's sort of uh, a work in, in progress, is that they're, where you're able to see that students are wanting a bit more information and you can delve further, that's that's how we're curating further masterclasses. Say for example, um, what, what I can see from here is probably uh, a, a class around how do you market your project? Um, how do you go selecting your, your agent and so on and so forth? Um, you know, what considerations that needs to be. And um, so I think it's really important that, that what this whole education hub is, is, is to be able to, you know, in its core to be able to cater to, to what the community is wanting. And it's really important that, that we get the feedback from, you know, anyone that, that attends these to give feedback to say, I, I want to delve further into into this and it could be even with feasibilities because feasibilities you've got feasibilities for land subdivisions townhouses units mixed use commercial and all sorts of things right um and that that is a whole master class in itself um so i think it's it's really exciting to see how this will unravel and and and, and develop across the next few months as well okay cost is there after class support and mentoring um, 
so in terms of cost, that's on the screen here. So thanks, Alex, for your question. Four hundred dollars is, um, is is your cost. We've got a discount offer that's live um, on our website, and there's the link that can take you there. Um, in terms of mentoring, I'll probably throw it to Rob and Dave to be honest. Um, you know, mentoring and, and yeah, so both myself and Dave, um, we're already business partners, but that's a, that's another after service, I guess, from the from the class that we'll be, we can provide to whoever whoever would like that service. Um, Obviously, we have that um, experience in uh, myself construction, and I can provide a lot of uh, assistance on the construction side of things. Um, whether it comes to engaging builders and, and, and what, what to look look out for, and and Dave with finance specifically, and then broadly, just generally with um, I guess property and, and having recommending um, uh, a lot of consultants and network that we have that we work with at the moment that assists us with our with our projects. Um, so it's certainly uh, something we'll be offering as well. We, we love talking about it so much that um, we'll be remiss not to, not to want to talk more about it after the class. <laughs> Very true. I've got a comment here um, from David on, on the Facebook Live. He, and David's based in, in Brisbane. Um, David, these guys are based in Melbourne, just, just to let you know. But he did ask if he can engage the team to help with his future projects when he's finance ready. Um, David, probably good to have a chat to the other David <laughs> about finance to begin with. Um, and also to give them a bit of an idea of the type of projects you're doing, because uh, David Ng is, is uh, looking to deliver some community type, community housing type product, which is quite unique and very and quite specific there. Um, so it is something that probably needs a little bit of creative uh, finance in that in that aspect. Yeah, absolutely. It's a specialised asset class and. Um... I can absolutely happy to delve into how banks and non-banks actually might might look into that uh, as well. So um, yeah, absolutely happy to take some questions offline um, if that's easier. Cool. Yeah. So David, um, we'll definitely leave um, some contact details at the end of this this session. But again, you know, it, it, the whole idea was to be able to introduce everyone to what it is that we're, we're working on together. Obviously, these guys are uh, the ones that are, are helping put together the sessions, um, but it's, it's imperative that any particular topic that you're wanting to learn more about and we're understanding, you know, and this is not to take away from the coaches and the educators out there who are probably staring daggers at this screen right now. Uh, you guys deliver a, an excellent service, but this is, this is complimentary to that. There are a lot of uh, people in the community who want to learn about development uh, are looking for mentoring, um, you know, the, and then, an education that's affordable and easily accessible. What this allows us to do is to allow you to almost pick out like a menu, you know, to be able to say, all right, well, this week I'm going to be, you know, for the next four weeks, I want to be learning about this. And, and it could be, it could be options. It could be land subdivisions. Uh, and that's what, you know, will eventually roll out as part of this. Is that, did I sort of <laughs> say the right thing there, Tom? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, as, as you mentioned at the start, and I kind of mentioned earlier, you know, this is the first of many. Um, what we do this time around will look very different, um, you know, in six months' time. Yeah, you know, my, my background, um, so I, I, my day job, I work at National State Bank. I've been leading large teams in small business for the last six years. Um, and a big part of my role has been around how we onboard new employees to be successful in their roles. And we've been proactively changing the way we deliver education to meet the needs of, um, of the guys, of the team. And we've done that through getting feedback from the group, learning from the past and um, trying different things, right? So um, very much as Cheryl's explained very well, how we deliver today will look very different in the future. And, but we will do that by working with you and the broader group and the broader coaches as well to share that experience and make sure we provide meaningful content. Yeah. And when we're talking about coaches, you're also talking about people who are not necessarily, you know, Rob, David or yourself yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. And we'll pull in different, different experts from different areas as well. Absolutely. Cool. 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 Um, so you've got details of um, 
the session there, uh, kick off 10th of June. If anyone has any questions, uh, definitely pop it in the comments section in the Facebook Live on, on the Facebook page. Otherwise, I'm just, does anyone have any other final questions before we sort of wrap things up? No, thanks, Tony. Thanks for, thanks for your kind words there. Um, again, it's, it's sort of a work, work in progress. Good on you guys. Um, fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm like you guys, uh, kicking off a new side hustle and it's, um, it's a challenge to, to put yourself out there. So keep doing what you're doing and your, your passion will bring you through. And as Gary V says, get out there, document and just give, 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 um, jab, 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 right hook. So yeah. <laughs> jab, jab, jab. Tony, Tony's been doing a lot of it. I have to say, Tony, um, I've been a huge fan of what you've been doing. You definitely put yourself out there. I know getting onto Facebook lives when you first did was a little <laughs> bit uncomfortable and all yeah. of that. But look at you now, you're like a Facebook star. Oh, look, I'm writing a white page at the moment on the um, NCC 2019 VCA for waterproofing and um, AS3740. Is that of... English? Sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you decipher all those acronyms, please? You know, that's, that's the thing. And, and Thomas and Robert and Dave will understand. And so will, um, um, so will Alex. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, Nas to... I got that. National Construction Code something, something, so something. National Construction Code. Yeah, see? 19, that was the addition. And it's the building code of Australia. But the thing is, people want to build, people want to do something, but they don't speak our language. So what we all need to do is we need to break it down. And that's why I've taken the table and turned it into a document that people can read. And um, I do this every day of the week. And I look at it sometimes and think, this is confusing the shit out of me after 40 years. So how, how is someone supposed to waterproof their bloody bathroom or understand what someone's doing when I'm finding it challenging. So I, I'm as I said, guys, um, I'm I'm building stuff every day of the week myself. And I went back to a document that the MBA wrote, that was the original internal waterproofing document um, uh, that they wrote years years ago back in oh god late eighties. And I'm I was sitting here reading it tonight, and it's just full of information. So keep doing what you're doing. Congratulations. I really look forward to seeing you in the marketplace. And I know we'll catch up at some stage. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and good on you, Cheryl. I, I really enjoy what you're doing as well. And Thank you, you. You just kicked off and you just kept going. And, and of course, our little environment, you know, um, everyone, um, Luke and Rob and, and Tony, Tony Meredith have all said, hey, you know, get out there, watch what Cheryl's doing and, and Davina. <laughs> and, and that's who we are because, um, yeah, it's, I'm only 61. I've got another 30 years to go. Let's do it. 40, 40 at least. <laughs> yeah. I want to retire. I want to I want to chill out and go fishing and, and own a tiny house for 10 years before I, you know, hit 100. So <laughs> I'll, work, I'll, work on, I'll work on another 30. <sighs> Good on you, Tony. I love it. Um, I do have some questions popping up. Hold on one second. Peter Trung's asking, um, is the 400 for the whole course or each subject webinar? It's for the whole course. Yeah. Yep. Oh, $50 off if you, um, if you register before Sunday. VIP rates. I can't see if there are any other comments here because I've done something funny on my page. Um, any other comments, like I said, or, you know, um, are you happy for people who are willing to be, you know, experts in terms of contributing to the community as well to reach out to you, Tom? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep, yeah, um, absolutely. Sure. Um, I, how would be the best way we communicate our details? Um, I'll pop it. Yeah, actually, you, you just share it with me and I'll pop it on the Facebook post. Um, I'll also put an announcement that we can pin up about, um, about the classes. We'll put out the events and things like that. And, and, and also anyone that's interested and who is, you know, an expert in their field and, and looking to contribute to the community in some way or form, reach out to me, reach out to Tom. We can talk about how that looks and looks and feels. Yeah, absolutely. Cool bananas. Thanks everyone. Awesome. Thanks everyone for being here. Thanks Ray. Alex, Dave, Tony, Tom. Thanks, Cheryl, for organizing that. Not Thanks, a problem, Rob. Yeah.
Cheers. Have a good evening. And um, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited to be be kicking these off. This is great, guys. Yeah. All right. Ciao. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night, guys. Bye bye.